2013 through 2016 BMW 435i rear brake pads, rotors, and sensor replacement. I'm Brian Nesta from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of replacing the rear brakes. Before we get started, I wanted to show you the part numbers for the brake pads, rotors, and sensors. I will link these all up in the description of the video. That way, if you need to pick any of these up, you can find those there. When it's possible, I like to use factory parts, especially on high-end vehicles such as this 435. One of the first things you need to do is go on the driver's side here under the engine compartment here and lift this little panel up and remove a few ounces of brake fluid from the master cylinder here. So we're just going to suck out like one or two ounces. A turkey baster works well for removing uh, brake fluid from master cylinders. Next we need to get the rear of the vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up on the body mounts on the side there. And after that go ahead and remove the rear wheels. Once you get the rear wheels removed, the next step is you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and you're going to pop this metal clip off. So you put it in between the clip and the rotor and give it a little pry inwards like this and then use your fingers to pull it off. Now that you got the bracket off, you're going to come around here and we're going to pop these little uh, plastic caps off that cover up the bolts that hold the caliper on. So there's going to be two of those, one here on the top and then one just below here on the bottom. I also wanted to point out this is the standard brake, not the one with the electronic park brakes. So if you have that car, this brake job is a completely different procedure. So once you get those caps removed, you're going to remove the, the Allen bolts behind it. You're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen socket to remove these two uh, bolts. So there's going to be one on the bottom, one on the top. You can use hand tools or power tools, whatever you feel like. There is enough room to get power tools back here. And go ahead and remove those two bolts and then you're going to pull the caliper off. I've found using flex head ratchets like this work best for this application though. I've also found to get the bolt all the way out, you use a little screwdriver like this to help push it through like this as you rotate the, uh, the ratchet and give it a little push. And once you get it going far enough, then you can reach around the back and grab it with your fingers and pull it out like this. We're gonna lube this up and clean it up, but for now, set them aside. So now we need to get the caliper off. And now what we need is a, a flat blade screwdriver. I'm gonna put it in between the pad and the rotor here and give the caliper a little pry over like this and that'll compress the piston in a little bit because the rotors uh, develop a lip on them and it won't allow the, the uh, caliper to come off with the brake pads. It'll get stuck on there. So we press it in like that a little bit and that gives us enough room and space to pull the caliper off like this. Now you can just set the caliper up here on top of the suspension and rest it here for right now. We're, the next step is we're gonna get this caliper bracket off. We're gonna remove these two 16 millimeter bolts here and here. To do that, I'm gonna use some of my favorite uh, wrenches in my toolbox, which are made by Mountain. These wrenches are about 18 inches long. Uh, they're flex head and they, they have a tremendous amount of uh, torque that you can put on them and they make jobs like this really easy. You can also get power tools in here. There's plenty of room to get a, a ratchet back here if you have that. So go ahead and crack these two bolts free and take those out. Once you get the caliper bracket off, you can set this aside for now. Next, we're gonna remove the rotor. It's held on with a one Allen screw. It's a seven millimeter Allen. So go ahead and put your seven millimeter Allen on there, crack it free and spin it out. Once you get the bolt removed, to get the rotor off, if you're lucky, you can just pull it off, but if not, it'll be stuck on this hub here. And I like to use a hammer and hit it on just the face of the rotor, being careful not to hit the lip of the, uh, of the hub. And that'll jar it free and uh, allow you to pull the rotor straight off. If your hub is rusty, I recommend that you use a wire brush or some sandpaper and, and scuff it up and get the as much of the rust off and make the surface as smooth and as flat as you can get them. So you wanna do the flat portion and also around the hub portion of it and, and get it good and clean. Now our hub is all cleaned up, we're gonna uh, turn our attention back to the sensor here, the brake lining sensor, and go ahead and remove that. So you can go ahead and pop it out of the uh, brake pad here, just pull it out. And then on the brake bleeder screw here, there's a little rubber tab. So you're gonna pop that little rubber tab off right here. So you pull that back. Now you'll follow the wire back and it'll be, it'll have a little catches every couple inches. So you're gonna pop them out of their catches. And you're usually able to pop these open with your fingers, but you may need to use like a little pocket screwdriver or kind of flip these little tabs open. And then you can pull the wire out of the, out of the holder and then you just keep following it around. So it's gonna go around the uh, spring here on the back side of the spring. You're gonna pop these little uh, white tabs open. You may need to use a little pocket screwdriver to kind of pop these open. You just stick them in there and uh, flare them a little bit and then they pop open. You only wanna pop out the wire for the brake lining sensor. The second wire is for the ABS sensor. So you just leave that one in the connector and just remove the, um, the brake lining sensor here. So pop the tabs open. 
once you get them popped out this far, I like to start pulling the wire through here, pull the slack out of it and just pull it through. And then after we get those done, there's a, bit, a plastic nut right here on the inner fender wheel. We're gonna remove the plastic nut. And once you get that removed, then we're gonna peel the inner fender wheel back and just flare it out of our way. So you'll pull it back like this. And then right there will be the little, little uh, holder here where the connectors are connected. So you'll pop this little door open and swing it open. Then you can pull out the brick lining sensor here and disconnect it by squeezing the little tab right here. So you'll squeeze the tab and pull the two connectors apart. Now you want to inspect the condition of the caliper boot here, make sure it's not all torn up or anything. And if it is, I recommend replacing the caliper. So now I'm going to push the piston back in. So I'm going to lead the brake pad in there uh, momentarily while I push that back in. We're going to lead the bleeder screw closed. We're not going to open that up. That's the reason why we took out some of that brake fluid. So as we press this piston back in, the brake fluid is going to go back up the brake line and back into the master cylinder. If it's over full, it will spill out of the master cylinder and into the engine bay. By doing it this way, we will not have to bleed the brakes after we're done, just pump the brake pedal. So our next step is going to be is to push the piston back in by using a brake caliper piston tool like this. If you don't have a tool like this, you can use a uh, C-clamp and clamp it over the outside and pull the uh, piston in. Once you get that done, you're going to remove the pad and then we're going to prep the rotor for reinstallation. So what we're going to do is line up the hole on this rotor here. Make sure it lines up with the hole on the hub and we're going to put the rotor on and we're going to check our park brake adjustment. We're also going to check the park brake shoes to make sure they're in good shape. After that, we're going to slide the rotor on and you want to spin the rotor and you want to feel a light drag on the uh, shoes. If they're not, if they feel loose, then what you can do is adjust this little star wheel right here. So you'll adjust it one way and it'll, it'll bring the shoes inwards, which will loosen it, or you can adjust it the opposite way, which will spread the shoes, which will tighten the, um, the park brakes. So you want to do it until you feel a light drag on the rotor right here. You don't want it to stop or anything, but you want to feel a light drag. You can kind of feel those shoes make contact with the inside of the rotor here. So once you get these shoes adjusted to where your likings, then you can take the set screw and go ahead and re-secure that onto the rotor. So bolt it back up. It came with blue thread locker on the thread. So I recommend you put a little dab of that on there. That'll prevent this from vibrating loose and backing back out. I will link this up in the description also. So now you can just run the screw in until it's uh, snug. And uh, I just tighten it up by hand with my little ratchet right here. Now we're gonna prep the bracket here and I'm gonna clean it up and um, inspect it for rust or anything like that and make sure it's in good shape. So I like to use a wire brush and just clean out all the channels. Once it's all cleaned out, then I'll take a little bit of blue thread locker and put it on the bolts that uh, held it in. And then we'll slip the bracket back into position and we'll start the two bolts on the backside. Once you get the two bolts started, then you can go ahead and run them in so they're snug and then tighten them down. The torque spec is about 50 foot-pounds. Now we're going to prep the inner brake pad to go into the caliper. And before I put the you know, pad on, I'll use a little bit of Seal Glide brake grease and put a little dab of that on the back of it. It's specially designed grease to, to work with brakes. I'll link this up in the description. So you can put it on the back of the shim here and a little bit on the edge of the uh, where it slides on the uh, bracket on the caliper. Put a little bit of grease around it and this will help prevent squeaks now you can take the pad and press it into the uh, caliper you want to be sure not to get any grease on the front of the uh, surface after you get the pad on the caliper installed then you're going to take the outer pad that goes on the bracket here and you're going to do the same thing you're just going to slip this on right here and then you can put the grease on on the outside of the uh, shim here just put a thin little layer of the of the uh, grease and don't forget to put the, the grease on the little lip right here where it slides. Once you get that done, you can swing the caliper back into position. So you'll lower it down and put it over the pad. You want to make sure that the brake hose is not twisted when you're doing this. Slide it back into position. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our slide pins here and uh, lube these up and make sure that they're clean. And uh, we'll put that grease on these pins right here and get, uh, work that grease in there good and make sure it's nice and clean. And then we'll slip those back into position. Once you get those pressed back into the caliper, you're just going to go back over the top like this and make sure it's fully seated in there. And then you can go ahead and tighten the uh, 8 millimeter Allen screw here. Tighten it up. So once you've got top and bottom bolt tightened, then you can go ahead and put the little plastic caps that, that went on them. So you just press them back on over the little boots here. Just push them in until they fully seat. Your next step is going to be is to put this metal clip back on so it just presses back into position so you'll hook these little ears on the outside of the bracket right here 
And once you get them hooked on the outside of the bracket, then you're going to pry the clip inwards until it pops into place. So you'll pry it in and then you push it into those little holes on the top and bottom and then you give it a little pull to make sure it doesn't pop back off. Now we're going to install the brake lining sensor here. So you're going to put it with this little nipple here facing inwards and you'll push it in until it fully seats into the pad like this. Now you're going to loop the wire through the bleeder screw holder here and then flip the little rubber tab over and push it on the place. Then you'll route it down the upper control arm here putting it back into the little plastic holders. So once you get it secured in the uh, little brackets here and the little clips clip back on, you're going to route it around the spring here and clip it onto the, uh, the two white clips in the back back there. So you'll put those, the wire back in and push the little hatches back closed. Do that for both. Then you'll peel the, um, you'll peel the inner fender liner back and then you can plug in the electrical connector. Once you get it plugged in, you can uh, reposition it back into the little box that it plugs into and then you'll flip the little door over and close it. Now you can reposition the fender liner and reinstall the little plastic nut that held it on. After that, you can reinstall the wheel and torque it down to 103 foot-pounds. You'll do the same thing for the opposite side, minus the pad lining sensor that only has it on one side. After that, you're gonna pump the brake pedal five or six times to get the fluid back into the calipers. And you should have a nice firm brake pedal. As a disclaimer, I will say if the pedal feels spongy or soft after you're done, then I recommend bleeding the system. After you pump the brake pedal, the next step is to go back under the hood and double check your, your brake fluid. If it's low, then top it off. Dot out for brake fluid and reinstall the cover. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick any of those up, you can find those there. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.